This is the Marshall Middleton, and inside this chassis packs two tweeters, two 3-inch woofers, and two passive radiators, a setup that Marshall claims can deliver powerful 360 degree sound that does not compromise on bass and clarity. But is that really the case? And what are the reasons to buy or not to buy the Marshall Middleton? We're going to listen to some binaural sound samples, which I recommend listening with headphones to hear all the details. And if you don't want to miss out on more reviews like this one, get subscribed and tap the bell button to stay notified. The first thing you'll notice about the speaker is how hefty and solid it feels. It doesn't feel like something that needs to be coddled or protected, more like something you just toss into your bag with your keys and stuff comes with a rubber strap, it's thick and grippy, use it, not use it, that's entirely up to you. And like other Marshall portables, it's got a control knob that functions as power, volume, and playback controls. It's easy and straightforward, probably my favorite thing about Marshall portable speakers. It packs up to 20 hours of playtime, and by connecting a USB Type-C cord, its battery can be used to charge something else instead, like your phone or your earbuds. I've tested other Marshall portable speakers before, and this is probably the first Marshall speaker that has this feature. If you guys know otherwise, let me know in the comments. It also supports multi-point pairing. I've tested it, and it seems pretty reliable, as in there are no signal drops or other weird behavior. And if you want to, you can daisy chain other Middletons to it by what Marshall calls stacking. You can use the companion Marshall Bluetooth app to start a stack session if you want to use multiple Middletons to cover a wider area, or physically stack them like so to amplify their sound. There are a few ways you can customize its sound quality. There are buttons of the speaker that lets you tweak the bass and treble, and you can also do it in the companion app. Now, how does it sound like on the flat settings, and how much of a difference does the bass and treble controls make? Let's listen to a couple of sound samples. For the first track, listen to how crisp and loud the vocals are, and the clarity and twang of the guitar. Okay, now we're gonna increase the bass, see how that changes the sound. Maximum bass. Minimum bass.
the second track is more bass focused. Listen to the extension and tightness of the Middleton's bass. Money work. Sound the bass. Let's see how that changes the sound. Minimum bass. Let's bring the bass down all the way to minimum settings. Overall, the Middleton sounds clean, dynamic, and it sounds loud. Now, what I really like about the Middleton sound is that it's not very placement sensitive, and you don't really need to place it, say, in a corner to get great bass extension. It could be in the middle of the room or outdoors on a bench, and it still delivers a full, rich sound. If you do place it in a corner, it can sound boomy, but it's easy to correct that on the Middleton. It's just one button away, just reduce the bass directly from the speaker. Now, I don't usually touch the treble controls because the Middleton sounds quite bright already. In fact, depending on the music, even on medium settings, its treble is sometimes a bit too bright for my liking. But if you want to squeeze a bit more, airiness out of it, it won't hurt to bring its treble a notch or two higher. Now, does it have any stereo imaging? Well, it does. Wide enough for the speaker to sound bigger than it looks, but it won't sound as wide as separate left and right channel speakers. So if you're thinking of using this as a TV speaker substitute, do bear in mind that it's not going to sound like a soundbar. Playing videos, the lip syncing is very tight, as in there isn't any noticeable delay, even when the speakers pair to two devices at once. Feature which arrived on the Link Buds S almost three months ago. So why did it take Sony this long to bring it to the XM4? Hey guys, today we're gonna listen to the sound quality of the Sonos Era 300 and Era 100 wireless speakers. The Era 100 replaces the Sonos One, and the Era 300 is the next gen of what used to be the Sonos Play 3. Now, just to give you a bit of a lowdown about the insides of these speakers, the Era 100. Now, let's talk about how loud it is. When I'm playing it outdoors, I barely need to go beyond 60% volume. But if you are just sitting next to the speaker and you want some personal BGM, even at 30% volume, there's very little compromise in terms of sound quality. That DSP is pretty good. It will ensure a full rich sound, even at very low volume levels. Above 70% volume though, is when the bass gets overwhelmed and the speaker begins to sound shrill and brittle. But in most cases, you won't really need to go beyond 60% volume. Because even if you're at a party and you're using the speaker for BGM, you want to be able to hear the music, but not playing at such a loud volume that it's impossible to have conversations with your friends, right? So you often not want to go beyond 60% volume with this speaker. Overall, this is a very versatile speaker that you can use in many different situations. That being said, there are some things that 
can be better. For example, you can daisy chain this speaker using the stack feature, but you cannot make a stereo pair. So it's not possible to get dedicated left and right channels out of two separate Marshall Middletons, which is something that can be done on portable speakers from JBL. It doesn't have a microphone, so you can't use it as a hands-free speaker, unlike the Marshall Willen. And finally, this one's not really a big deal, the buttons and their labeling could also be more obvious, more distinct. Even better if I can locate the buttons easily simply by feeling. Right now, even if I use my eyes, I can only see the buttons from certain angles. Like I said, it's not a biggie, but if you're using the speaker for say the first couple of times and you're trying to find the Bluetooth pairing button, it's a little less intuitive. Those are some smaller gripes that only affect a small number of people. Most people are going to be very happy with the Marshall Middleton. It's powerful, clean sounding, rugged, and very versatile. One of the best sounding portable speakers at this size with analog bass and treble controls that you can tweak on the fly. That being said, if there's a speaker that you want me to compare the Middleton to, let me know in the comments. And do subscribe and tap the bell button to stay notified of new videos. Thanks for watching, smash like and share to refill my HP. I'm also on Discord, so if you have Discord, come and join the chat, link is in the description. By the way guys, I've also reviewed other Marshall speakers like the Acton 3, Stanmore 3, and the Warburn 3. If that's the kind of content that you're interested in, click on this video over here or watch another video from my channel.